I'm Scott Allen Miller, and this is my life living in Central America. Today, I was reading an article from CNN. I know, whatever. But it was uh, about how there's gringo pricing happening to people in America. I, what? Yeah, you know, living in Central America, I thought this is something I would have to deal with here, not something I would have to deal with when I visit the United States. We're going to get to, right after the bump, what I mean and how this is affecting people. All right, let's get to that bump. Okay, so what does it mean to be gringo priced? Let's start with that. So we had a recent video where we discussed what it means to be a gringo. And literally in Spanish, the word just means, well, technically it means Greek, but it is a slang term for foreigner, extra and hero. So uh, it's not a specific reference to Americans or Canadians or North Americans or even Europeans or white people or anything of the sort. It is just not people from where you are. Now, I live in Nicaragua, as most of my viewers know, but I'm here in the middle of Central America. And in Latin America, the term gringo is used universally for people who are from anywhere. And it doesn't make any additional implications. So when we're talking about gringo pricing, a lot of Americans especially uh, believe that this is a specific slight against Americans and that they're being charged extra for being American. And while that could happen somewhere, that is not at all what is implied by gringo pricing. What is implied by it is simply that people who are non-local are going to be charged more than people who are local. This happens the world over. It's just here in Latin America, we refer to that phenomenon because it's pretty prevalent and it's very obvious in a lot of cases as gringo pricing. So it's something we're used to saying, we're used to thinking about it, and we tend to be pretty aware. Now, in this particular area, because I live in Nicaragua, most of the people who are moving in from abroad to this region are going to Costa Rica. So Costa Rica has a really strong uh, um, impression of having a lot of gringo pricing. It is something that people in, uh, who are, gringos who are living in Costa Rica have a tendency to r uh, report that they're experiencing it quite often. Living here in non enclave Nicaragua. I live in a major city, but not one that is full of extra and heroes, full of gringos. Uh, I can say that the amount of gringo pricing that I experience, I'm no longer a traveler. If I was a traveler doing traveler things, absolutely. Uh, but you could also look at that point as self gringo pricing, right? Tourists have a tendency to stay in high cost hotels that advertise online. They tend to eat at restaurants that advertise to uh, people in English that have English menus that are in tourist areas, whereas locals have a tendency, but not always, to eat in you know, street food food or in neighborhood restaurants and stay at hotels that don't advertise online and so forth. So in a way, that's gringo pricing, just where the gringo is doing it to themselves. But it's important to understand that that's there. But once we've gotten past being tourists, once we actually live here, the amount of gringo pricing that we experience has dropped to really close to zero. It's never going to be zero. And I totally recognize that. And I understand that it needs to be that way a little bit. But my utility costs, my rent, my car payments, my uh, uh, food at restaurants, my food from the grocery store, and in most cases, my food from the market, all of those things I'm paying the same price as everyone else. It's exactly the same. There isn't this opportunity for customized pricing left and right all the time. Even when I order food online, I'm paying the same as anyone else as long as we're following the same processes. So I'm not being gringo priced under normal conditions. If I did go to the market where people haggle over prices, I'm going to be gringo priced. But even there, it's a little bit difficult to exactly determine what would be gringo pricing because in many ways, gringo pricing is just a failure to negotiate a better price. When you're haggling, that comes down to a lot of different factors. It's also important to note that a lot of Nicaraguans who have spent a significant amount of time abroad, especially those who have begun to take on accents from different regions, are often identified as gringos or treated as if they are gringos and get gringo priced the same, even though they are Nicaraguans, even if they are from the local neighborhood and people might even know them, if they know that they have access to foreign funding, if they know that they have kids who live in America, if they know that they have a job uh, outside the country or whatever, then people may easily gringo price them, right, based on the fact that they know they have more financial resources and they are not in a position to negotiate as hard. Right. Does that make sense? If someone is selling a, a, a bunch of bananas and it's going to be 50 cents and a local knows it's 50 cents, everyone knows it's 50 cents. They come in and they say, I'll give you 50 cents. And they're like, yeah, we're not even going to negotiate. Here you go. Here's your 50 cent banana. And then someone comes in that they know spends part of their time living in the United States or they know is a tourist or they really suspect that it is. And they come in and they say, these, these bananas are going to be 75 cents. 
that person may know that they're supposed to be 50 cents. And I know in some cases that they do. I know people who've been gringo priced when they're like, but I live, you can see my house. I live here. We know what the prices are. We know what that guy paid, right? And the place is like, I won't sell them to you at that price, period. It doesn't matter if you know what the price should be for everyone else. I'm not willing to sell them to you at that price. Now, whether that's right or not, that's a separate discussion, but that's what happens. And you end up saying, well, you know what? It's only 25 cents. I'm not willing to stand here and waste my time haggling over 25 cents. And if you do accept that 75 cents, you've just made their point for them that someone else would have moved on. A local would never have spent 50% more because it's, you know, 25 cents. That's a lot. They're just just not going to shop there anymore. They're going to lose that customer, but you are going to give up and pay in most cases. And if you, if only, you know, one out of three people did that, they're still making more money than if they sold them to you at the regular price. They make so much markup. So there's a lot of incentive for them to do this. And there's a lot of incentive for you to give into it. So the system perpetuates itself. Okay. That's some background on what gringo pricing is. And we're not going into a deep discussion of should it be? Why is it? What causes it? Do we, you know, nothing like that. What I want to talk about is I just read this article on CNN about how gringo pricing is now becoming a new thing in America. What do I mean? So in the example, they talked about, they use Starbucks as an example, so I'll just use them. Starbucks is using AI to basically determine who are gringos. Now, in this case, gringos are not people who are foreign necessarily, but it could be, but is actually looking for people who are simply in a position to be more likely to spend more money. But that's all really gringo pricing is in Nicaragua or Costa Rica, right? Or anywhere in the world. So think about it from the perspective of the salesperson. You own a small shop, someone comes into your shop and you say, hey, I think I'm really confident that this person is going to be willing to spend 5% more, 10% more, 100% more on this because they're not willing to negotiate. They're not going to be good at negotiating. They're not going to be aware of what local prices are. And you can see it in the discussions on my channel all the time that that Americans will often, and Canadians and other foreigners, will often say, oh, well, I'm going to go there and I'm going to spend extra. I'm going to pay too much for things so that, you know, people make more money. Like it seems good. Right. But what you end up doing is encouraging gringo pricing. You make them think that gringos will just throw money at them. So people who live here who are perceived as gringos, this is important. It's only who is perceived as being able to spend more money will be charged more money. Now, in many cases, it's real. And so it's not a big deal for the most part. Uh, But there are people who may be perceived as being foreign who are not and who may be really struggling to survive because that gringo pricing may be making life very expensive for them when it shouldn't be. So there's real dangers with this. So when you're encouraged to just spend extra, think about buying more things rather than just giving away money through a sales process. Basically, donating money is always a bad answer one way or another. We're going to do a video about why that's pretty much always bad, but just be aware if you're basically donating system, just voluntarily giving away money that doesn't make sense, there's going to be a better way to use your financial resources to do good for the country and to do good for your community. So back to Starbucks. Starbucks is now using AI to guess, but using a lot of information about your buying habits. So this is much more powerful than standard gringo pricing, right? There, they're completely guessing based on the way you look, the way you dress, your accent, things like that, to figure out if you are someone who would spend more money. That's really how they're defining gringo in practical terms. They're just lumping the two together. They perceive that you're someone who has access to greater funds than the local population, and so they're going to try to use that knowledge to get more money out of you on a transaction. That's all that's happening, and it's a basic business thing. So when we're talking about gringo pricing at Starbucks, they're using AI to do the same thing. Now, they don't have a huge population of people who are actually foreigners to work with as an identifier for people to charge more. So they're using AI to simply determine which people's behavior and past activity indicates that they are capable of spending more or less capable of waiting for a sale or whatever. Now, they phrase this in a way to make it sound good. What they say is that they identify through the AI people who are unwilling to spend more money, and so they give them discounts. So by looking like someone who's not going to spend money unless you give them a good discount, some people get lower pricing. But that means that you can always reword one person getting a discount as other people paying a premium. So the people who are not getting that discount are paying 
as much as double for their products. And in the example of the Starbucks, the person who wrote the article pointed out that they had a friend who went, and they, this is done using an app, right, in this particular case. But this is, I'm sure, happening all over the place. And you can bet it's happening in places you would never guess. That's what makes it powerful, is that their friend went to Starbucks and ordered a coffee. And for, we'll just say it was for $5, they received two coffees. They got an, a coupon on their app that said they got two for one, buy one, get one free. The other person saw that they had that coupon and said, that's a great deal. I want Starbucks coffee too. They went to the same app and did not get the same pricing. They literally got double the cost for the coffee. But in this example, the person writing the article said, and the AI was right because they bought the coffee regardless of the fact that the sale wasn't on. They went to the app hoping to get a Starbucks coffee, and because they were already emotionally tied to getting a coffee, they spent $5 on a single coffee instead of $5 on two coffees. So it was a case where the gringo pricing worked in the favor of the vendor, Starbucks in this case, because they determined that one customer was willing to overspend versus the other. Well, that's all that gringo pricing is doing in Costa Rica, for example. If they see you come in, they think you have a lot more money to spend, they're going to guess that you're going to be less willing to spend your day negotiating over a few cents, so they're just going to charge you that little bit extra, and they'll take a very tiny risk that you'll turn them down because of it. It's extremely unlikely that they will lose money. Chances are, over time, they are making a lot of extra money by doing the gringo pricing. Starbucks is taking a gamble that by gringo pricing through this kind of mechanism, the same thing is going to happen happen. And they're probably right. Now, there's ways to work around this through things like uh, uh, collective purchase agreements and, and deal plans and things like that. But these are things that consumer groups have to put together to combat this. Otherwise, they're going to target people who are less able to negotiate, less willing to research what prices should be, uh, not comparing against other people, lacking access to other people's information, uh, or just have so much money that they are unwilling to spend the effort to get good pricing, and they're just going to raise the pricing for those people. That to a business sounds really good, but as a consumer, it means that something that we value heavily in American society, which is fair and even pricing for all people, the concept of supply and demand as we are taught in high school economics classes that no longer exists. Now it's personalized pricing that is starting to be tested. This is still pretty limited, but a lot of big companies, I guarantee you're starting to do this. There's huge firms that provide the power to do this. So companies of all sizes, including, I guarantee, Amazon resellers and eBay sellers and all kinds of things like that, are going to be using this kind of knowledge, whether it's very light uh, profiling or really deep information about you specifically, to make you pay the maximum price that you'd be willing to pay rather than you paying a fair price that is the same as your neighbors. And of course, we see this going on in other ways as well. And using AI to do this is going to immediately discriminate. And so hopefully, consumer protection laws kick in right away. But I have seen this in person within airlines charging men less than women, standing in the same line, same flight, one right after another, and they get treated differently using gender as a way to gringo price because they assumed, and rightfully so, it worked in their favor, that the men would mostly push back very heavily against not getting treated well and the women would capitulate. They took that gamble and it worked, at least in this really small anecdote of just maybe 12 people in line, but they did 100%. All the men were treated one way, all the women were treated another, and even witnessing it happen, the women, none of them pushed back. None of them threatened to call a lawyer. None of them got angry, they all just went, oh, okay, I don't get the same deal that all these men got. And that was it. This is how salary negotiations work. This is one of the reasons that unions are seen as valuable by a lot of people, because a lot of people aren't good at negotiating their own value. They'll just accept what they're given, whereas other people will go in and negotiate really hard. And of course, some people are desperate for a job, some people are not, they're currently working, and that plays in as well. <clears throat> and it's one of those places where we often say, well, your ability to negotiate is just part of being a worker, and so those people get paid more. And that may or may not make sense. That's something that we could discuss in a different video, really, but it's really noticeable that two people doing the same job in two different companies with basically the exact same everything 
could be different by 300% in what their compensation is, uh, based primarily off of one person's ability to negotiate and the other not. And just knowing how to negotiate could be mostly based on knowing what other people have been able to negotiate. Some people have access to that information and others do not. And that can leave you very much in the dark. That's why gringo pricing works, right? Because prices are not posted, because things are negotiated. You have no way to know what the actual price of an object is. That's what Starbucks is basing all this on. They found a means via their app to keep the prices secret and display different prices to different customers. As long as that AI is never considering race, gender, any age, anything like that, or using any factor that may be able to be tied to those, it may still be legal. Not nice, not something we value as Americans, something that undermines our way that we view shopping and, and the consumer experience in the United States and in Canada, but not technically illegal. But if that AI starts to make decisions that are trending, for example, if men often get coupons because they're more likely to negotiate coffee based on price and women are less likely to get coupons because they are uh, more likely to go into the app, want the coffee and buy it anyway, then we have a gender problem that women are being charged more than men and their gender will, AI will naturally, unless there is some really amazing safeguard. And I don't even know how you create a safeguard like this because even human intelligence can't safeguard against doing this. It will naturally come up in the system, right? Naturally trends that make you do things as a woman will cause some behavior. And I don't know which way it will go, right? I don't know who gets the benefit, but someone will based on their gender, someone will based on their race, someone will based on their region of the country. For example, I'm from New York. My willingness to buy a Starbucks coffee is super low. I'm not going to be, you know, tempted to pay full price for a Starbucks coffee. But you give me one for 50 cents, I'm going to be pretty tempted to swing in. So be, just because I'm a New Yorker, my chances of getting favorable treatment by that algorithm is very high. But someone who's really addicted to Starbucks coffee, it could be very low, and their region of the country could be a major factor for that. Well, I grew up in a place where Starbucks was part of my family tradition, and you hear this all the time. Well, we, we don't evaluate cost when it comes to family tradition. That's a really strong marketing tool that's used in the United States. You hear it all the time. We don't evaluate this logically because it's tradition, because it's a family thing, right? And that's that's an easy way to take advantage of people. AI is going to do that stuff automatically. And that's something that people don't understand about AI. AI is not going to be malicious, right? You, I mean, you could program malice into it, but that's not what's going to happen. AI is going to find those things that, whether directly tied to or indirectly tied to gender, race, region, whatever, family traditions, and it's going to exploit them naturally because that's what AI does. It looks for those things. Humans will normally say, whoa, yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it that very often I can pressure women to spend more than men. So I'm going to intentionally not treat women differently. But you have to intentionally do that if you're in a negotiation thing, because under normal conditions, over time, you will learn that certain types of people, whether it's the way their face looks, whether it's their facial expressions, whether it's their race or whatever, what their their accent, you're going to naturally negotiate differently because you train yourself over time of doing negotiations. AI is going to do that over huge scales and really quickly start using those things as factors unless we find really good ways to stop them. So hopefully things like the 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 FCC will not the FCC the uh, uh, FCT will step in uh, FTC will step in and and put a kibosh on some of the stuff because this really does go down that path but without that it's something you need to be aware of so that got a little bit technical but it's a, it's an interesting thing that we're often so concerned about gringo pricing when coming to Latin America and people really do think about it a lot. Well, I don't know if I'm going to get a good deal. I could get gringo priced everywhere. And there's good reasons to be concerned about that and good reasons to think about it consciously because with a little bit of effort, I think you can avoid it. And we're going to do some videos on that for sure. Ask your questions, get down below, you know, jump in with your comments and, uh, you know, what things we need to answer. And as always, check the links in the show notes about making a video submission for us to answer. We get very few of these and I love getting them. So please do that. And uh, boy, that's about it. So if you'd like to support the channel, the work that we do here and help me afford those Starbucks coffees where I'm probably not getting a discount, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. It helps support all the work that we do here on the show. And as always, I will see all of you tomorrow.